As a clinical psychologist, it baffles me that as the most intelligent species, we sometimes find it hard to learn from our mistakes, especially when it comes to love. Just respect people. I don't have to respect you, Alex. We're not together. I want to help them break free. Oh, sorry. Rip that little puppy up. In this experiment, I'm going to help people escape the cycle of damaging relationships where they make the same mistakes over and over again. I don't feel as pretty as them. I give too much of myself away too quickly. I'm going to confront them by bringing them face to face with their ex-lovers, friends and family to reveal some harsh truths. Do you think the way you looked was important to him? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Too much? Yes. I think this might change their lives. I did make it all about me. Will it work? You heard what Dan says, you know it, but do you believe it? Just like the people coming to see me, I'm willing to give it a try. My name's Sarah, I'm 26, and I'm a full-time mum. In relationships, I know that I'm stubborn. I can hold a grudge over things. Instead of always running away and giving up, like, I'd like to be able to fight for it. I guess it will be interesting to see what he has to say. I'm a bit nervous and, yeah, anxious. Today I'm going to meet with Sarah. Sarah runs from conflict. Uh, this leaves her problems mainly unresolved. This began when she was the child of divorced parents. She'd jump from one parent's house to the other. Commonly find this in children who use one parent against the other. It's a source of power, playing them off against each other. Hi, Sarah. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. I'm How Cliff. are you? Come nice on to in. meet you. Nice to meet you too. Have a seat. Thank you. Unfortunately for Sarah, this has filtered into her adult relationships and it's resulted in a rather messy love triangle. So, Sarah, what brings you here today? I guess I just wanted to get some sort of help around things that I'm doing wrong. Yeah. What do you think they might be? I'm very stubborn. And every time something goes wrong, I'll always run instead of trying to, you know, fix it. Right. Can you tell me a bit about who you are? I'm very family orientated. My family mean the world to me. Do you have a daughter? I do. She's seven months old. Wow. And she's the light of my life. Now that I have summer, I just want to focus on bigger and better things. All right. I've done a little bit of homework. And while I want to hear as much as I can from you about who you are and what's happening, I want to hear from some other people who also know you well, to give us a broader perspective on what's happening for you so I can help you move forward. How's that chair make you feel? Anxious. I knew that there could be somebody that I didn't want to speak to. Let's start from the beginning. Tell me a little bit about your past relationships, your significant ones. I think the two that were significant were Chris, who I was with for eight years. He was a major part of my life. Okay. What went wrong? He started working away. Right. Sometimes it would be three weeks and then one week home. It was like we were leading different lives right. sort of thing. And his time would be dedicated to his family and friends over me. So that relationship broke up. What happened next? I moved down to Canberra. And, yeah, I guess for a year he sort of chased me and tried to get me to go back. I ended up moving back to Queensland. Didn't work out? No. Why? In the end, it was my fault. Like, in that year that we'd broken up, I met somebody else. and. Who's that? His name's Alex. Okay. And he ends up being the father of my daughter. What was your relationship like with Alex? I guess, like, he wasn't financially stable or reliable at that. He was very charming and did tell me everything that I wanted to hear. Is that what you fell for? I think it was, yeah. Right. Because when you're with somebody for so long that you feel you didn't exist to. Yes. To then be with somebody that's constantly telling you how great you are and how beautiful you are, and it's nice. 
I didn't put my all into that relationship. I sort of saw it as a bit more of a rebound, I guess. What made you want to go back to Chris? I think I just freaked out, like, we had so much together. And then you found out you were pregnant. I guess me and Chris thought that it was ours, and, I mean, there was always that possibility that it wasn't, because the timing, you know, you can never be too sure. Then, at one point, I just freaked out. I was like, no, we need to get a DNA test done. In the end, I just asked Alex to do it. How did Chris react to finding out it was Alex's baby? Heartbreaking. There's no words to describe how awful that was. Yeah. At first, Alex didn't know. I ended up telling him, which I still regret to this day. Did Alex want to start a relationship after that? Yes. I moved in with Alex for two weeks. Two weeks. And then you left Alex and where did you go? I went back to Chris's place. OK. So you're not with Chris anymore? No. How's your situation with him now? Um, we don't talk very often anymore. But I think he's just really hurt and I'm hurt too. I ended up moving to Perth because I just needed to leave the whole situation. Mm. I needed to be around family. And Alex was messaging, you know, I'll do anything. Just let me be there for the birth. And I was just like, I can't deal with this. Do you get to see him often? When things are good, I'll see Alex probably maybe every second or third day. So do you still get romantic sometimes with him? Do I have to answer that? Maybe that's answer enough. Obviously, you're in a bit of a situation that's not the best for you at the moment. It's not ideal. Would you recognise that there's a pattern of a love triangle going on? Yeah, I know at one point there was. Like, I wouldn't say that anymore. Right. But I was going from every time there'd be an argument to what seems like the easier option. And that's not at all a good pattern. It was a really confusing time and it's hard to sort of relive that. So, Sarah, usually at this part of the day, I bring in an ex. They give us some help and try and advise us on some of the mistakes you might have made in the past. But when my team did some digging, we uncovered an extremely interesting blog that was written about you. Let's see who it's from. Chris and Sarah didn't end on good terms, and for that reason, Chris didn't want to join us today. However, I found another man in the mix that Sarah hadn't mentioned. While James and Sarah were never officially in a relationship, James was fully invested. Sarah met James when she was in conflict with Chris and Alex. I want to present to Sarah a blog written by James. You see, Sarah might not see her actions as negatively impacting herself, but she needs to understand how they're affecting others. It's titled, A Girl I've Been Seeing Is Pregnant. It all started just over a year ago. We got along great. We had lots to talk about and seemed to generally appreciate one another's company. And not to mention the kiss. All I could think was, why hadn't I met this girl sooner? So the next day, I told her, I have not been able to get you off my mind. I was thinking about flying to go and see her. She was thrilled about the idea. And that day, I booked a ticket. We had an absolute blast together. And then today, she drops the, I am pregnant. I've always wanted to be a father, but not a stepfather. And now I'm here, and these are the thoughts I'm going through with my mind, which aren't things I can discuss with her, because we're just dating. We're just seeing where things are going. This decision is solely up to her, but her decision in this matter affects me 100%. So there you have it. Probably the most difficult relationship story of my life. I guess it surprised me how much 
He was invested in it. He is a good friend, but he wasn't really another lover. When I found out I was pregnant, that was something I had to tell him. And you were also trying to reignite your relationship with Chris at that time, weren't you? Because you just left Alex, back with Chris, and then in slides James. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were hanging with James, I'm guessing Chris was away at work. Yeah, he was. And I told him one of my friends is coming right. to visit. And, you know, that's what it was. He was a friend. What I'm reading here is he doesn't see it that way. I guess it was just a distraction. What I wanted you to really understand is it's not just your emotions you're dealing with, but the lives of James and Alex and Chris. To have that big of an impact on somebody is a big thing. Like, whether you see it in a different point of view, like, what you do still can hurt people. So we've just heard from someone in your past. Now I think it's time to hear from someone in your present who will always be in your future, a loved one who really knows you and your dating habits. Right away, I was actually thinking of, like, my sister or my mum. My name is Jamie. I'm 24 years old, and Sarah is my older sister. Jamie was apprehensive about coming here today. She hasn't had an easy relationship with Sarah. Uh, she said Sarah holds grudges and can often respond with negative or hurtful words. Nervous to speak to her because we talk a lot about her relationships. I really hope that she doesn't react poorly to those things. The problem for Sarah is she fears being wrong and this triggers a fight or flight response for her. It comes out in a, a way that challenges the friendship or the relationship. All Jamie wants is for Sarah to be accountable and to understand the importance of being on your own. It's hard to be honest with our family members in fear of tainting the relationship, but sometimes those truths can have the greatest impact. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hi. How are you going? I was happy it was my sister. Sarah's very hard to read. She looked happy, I guess. <laughs> What was it like growing up with Sarah as an older sister? Well, I enjoyed it for the most part. <laughs> we had a few fights and I'd always steal Sarah's clothes and she'd retaliate. <laughs> Very typical sister relationship, I'd say. Right. So what do you think it would be like to be in a relationship with Sarah? I think that when things are going well, Sarah's really good in her relationships. Sometimes it could be like walking on eggshells. Sarah acts on her emotions and she's really good at holding grudges. I think some of the things that she said, like the way she said it, was just a bit like, oh, OK. It seems to me that Sarah hasn't spent a lot of time on her own. You think she's afraid to be alone? Yeah. I think she is. I think she needs to stop accepting anybody into her life when she's feeling lonely. I think she should take her time when she is looking for someone and recognise the impact that she does have on men and not let that get to a point where she's kind of stuck with them. You know, Sarah was telling me before, she said, I'm a runner in relationships. She said, when the gets tough, I'm gone. Yeah. I think in her relationships, maybe running is a way of, of dealing with the situation. Right, like an avoidance yeah. strategy. A coping behaviour. Yeah. Right. Where do you think it started, this running behaviour? Seems to be a bit of a theme in our family, I think, to avoid difficult uncomfortable situations. Right. I think that if Sarah's better able to deal with the situations as they occur, then she won't feel the need to run away. What are the main things Sarah needs to work on to ensure that going forward, she can have a happy relationship and does not end up in these pickles again? You need to be able to let things go when you're looking back on situations, it's really easy to want to justify your own behaviours. Sometimes you just need to say it was wrong. And I think it's good to 
admit you can be wrong, mm. but I also think it's important to step up when you know you're right. When we take accountability, it doesn't mean we're wrong or right or being walked over. It just means I'm saying, this is my bit. I'm going to own my bit. I think there were times maybe when Sarah was listening to what the psychologists were saying, but in her mind was going through that same process of going to defend herself. Healthier relationships are based on disconnecting the emotion from the behaviour and talking it through as two loving adults. When you're angry, you can walk away, but sit down, reflect and come straight back. It doesn't work like that. If you've hurt somebody, just leave it. You see what I'm saying? It's about letting go and forgiving. Is there any last comments you'd like to make before you leave? I just love you and I want the best for you. A little part of me is a bit worried that Sarah might be a bit upset with some of the things I've said. I'm hoping that she can just see that it is really from a place of love and we all just want the best for her, want her to be happy. After hearing from a younger sister whose honesty and sympathy was probably difficult to stomach at some times, I now want to hear from one more person in your present. A person that, whether we like it or not, will always be a part of your future. Um, that one I was worried about. My name's Alex. I'm 28 years old and um, I'm Sarah's ex-partner. We had a child together seven months ago. Alex and Sarah are still connected through their daughter, sometimes romantically, despite their ability to get along. The issue is Alex is prepared to invest everything in this relationship, whereas Sarah, at the side of conflict, runs. If this whole experience can help her, let's go and do it. So much respect has been lost between these two. What I'm hoping is that they learn to respect each other for the sake of their daughter. When I saw Alex, I guess I was in shock. He wasn't somebody I'd want to talk to. I don't think we'll ever come to an agreement on anything. He's impossible. No greetings here? I don't think she was very happy to see me. What I'd love is for you to tell me in your words how you both met and, and what your relationship was like at the beginning. It was a great connection, very passionate, but um, it was very up and down. There were breakups and getting back together. There were red flags there that there was that I obviously didn't didn't see. I suppose. What red flags? Just there was something else stopping her from committing. She'll ignore you, and she'll talk to somebody else, or she'll do spiteful things without me knowing. So I know you moved from Canberra to Queensland. She said, I need, I want to go by myself first for a week to get my head straight. And I thought this was very strange. It's like couples, they move together. Look, so, I, hang on, can I just hold you there? Yeah. I thought you'd, I could be wrong. I thought you'd left Canberra to go back with Chris. It was more to go back for uni and to see if there was any rekindling of anything. Um, but, but Alex, no. you didn't know that... No. As Sarah was moving back to be with Chris. 100% not. We were together. She said, I love you. I'll see you very soon. And she left. Sarah, is there a break in the story here of what you're telling me and what Alex is telling me that you would told me that you'd left Alex in Canberra to go and be with Chris. I didn't see it going anywhere and I honestly didn't believe Alex was going to move to Queensland. Was there a chance that you didn't want to give Alex up in case it didn't work with Chris? Have it like a backup plan? I was just confused. Like, I didn't know what was the best option for me. No matter what she says to you, there's always something else. But can you see the deep 
emotional impact that had on this man here, who then came to Queensland thinking, I'm, I'm going to start a life with the woman of my dreams. That's exactly right. Yeah. I do say that. And it, I guess it's hard because my mum always said, like, don't put your eggs in one basket and you're young. I was being led to think that it's OK to behave the way that I did. I'm not your mum and I'm not a mind reader. When your mum said, don't put all your eggs in one basket, I don't think she meant juggle two baskets. I don't think she meant in relation to dealing with another human's feelings. Where do you think she picked up this behaviour? Her upbringing. OK. Her parents had been separated and she lived mother and a stepdad and a father and a stepmother. And when things went bad with Sarah, she, she would run. She would go from her mum's house to her dad's house. And is that, is that arguments true, were never settled. They were just, she would just run. It's just easy. Like when you're a kid, if you're not, you're not getting along with your mum or she's not letting you do something, you can run to your dad who will let you do something. She said right at the beginning, the reason I've come here today is because I need to make some changes. So I want you to be as brave as you can right now and give her some helpful advice in what can she do to move forward in life. In a future relationship, I'd feel, give it everything you got. It's not the end of the world when things go bad. Every relationship has their arguments and whatnot and respect that person. At least, at the bare minimum, give them that respect. I don't have to respect you, Alex. We're not together. We have a child here who doesn't get a say. So you do need to respect each other. That child is going to understand how life works by watching how you two treat each other. So you two need to set a good example. I think it's come to a point where we need to call it what it is and put your child as your priority. Work to be friends and co-parents. Alex, thank you so much for coming today. I've spoken to her about this sort of stuff and I think it's always in the back of her mind. She's still 100% thinking, but you did this, but you did this, but you did this. She really needs to work on that before I think she could ever really change those things. I just can't even stand the sight of him. So today's undoubtedly been difficult. I want to highlight something for you. This is not a game of who's right and wrong. He's made some mistakes too. But I think so of you. And we're going to learn from yours, OK? I need you to learn to be comfortable as a single woman. As a mother, you're not alone. You need to stop running away. Just as you would advise your daughter never to run away from her problems, most of all, I think I need you to learn the art of forgiveness, Sarah, and letting go. We're not always right, and it can be hard to accept. Sarah picked up a pattern of behaviour with you, what we would call inconsequential thinking, acting without realising the repercussions of your actions. It's not until our mid to late 20s that what we call the prefrontal cortex of our brain fully develops. It's the part of the brain that controls our reasoning or consequential thinking. Helps us think before we act. Allow your past failings to propel you, become the best version of yourself. It's true. And if you've acknowledged them, and I know you can make those steps to, to change. I think so. I hope so. Up until now, I never really thought that way. But now that I'm responsible for another life, it's not just mine. You've got to prepare yourself a lot more and got to think into every move you make. Sarah was agreeing and nodding her head when I gave her all that take-home advice today. 
but I couldn't help notice she had a justification and a reason for every bit of criticism I leveled. It's not easy to accept fault, so I can only hope Sarah's heard what we've said and that we've triggered that part of her brain that'll get her to think before acting in the future.